Ryan Garcia just beat Devin Haney in what will go down as one of the upsets of the year. And it was a crazy fight. I was one of the people that was going in there thinking to myself, I don't see how Ryan Garcia can win this fight. I, w I did not believe in him one bit. I thought this was going to be Devin Haney's maybe his first stoppage of his career in like five years where it was going to go into the second half of the fight. Ryan Garcia wasn't going to be in shape and we were just going to see like maybe a TKO. I know that Devin Haney was going to flat out knock him out. He doesn't have power like that. But I thought that it was probably going to be a TKO maybe in the 10th or the 11th round, maybe even a DQ for Ryan Garcia. I could not have been further wrong. I could not have been further wrong. Devin Haney didn't look great today. Ryan Garcia looked really, really good. Although there is some things that we're looking at Ryan Garcia and I was like, he's not perfect. And the thing is, once you get a lot of new people that are watching boxing, because Ryan Garcia attracts an audience that isn't really, you know, boxing diehards or at least fighting diehards. I think that, you know, we get to see some opinions that are kind of outrageous, a little bit out there based on, you know, Ryan Garcia's performance. I do want to talk about him in the general conversation about 135, 140, but I do want to get right into it. Starting off, we're starting off with what worked really, really well for Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia's ability to blitz. When he went in there and he would throw four or five punch combinations, that's when Ryan Garcia made his money. That's when Ryan Garcia looked really, really good. When he was able to put Devin Haney on the back foot and land. The left hook. We all know that Ryan Garcia is a bit of a one-trick pony with that left hook. But my God, is it a good one trick to have in your back pocket? Because Devin Haney just could not put up with the power and the speed. The speed of that left hook. It's impossible to get, you know, a training partner, a sparring partner that will be able to replicate a left hook that's that fast and that powerful. And he just didn't seem ready for it. He seemed shocked by it when he first got in there, which is a little bit weird because Devin Haney, Bill Haney, we kind of know them to be like studiers, that they study the game hugely, that they go in there, that like they'll know every single one of your tendencies. They'll have a game plan, a rigid game plan set out from the very first step to the very last. So it was a little bit weird to see Devin Haney struggle to deal with that left hook because Ryan Garcia could land it pretty much at will. And every time he landed it, even if it wasn't clean, it hurt Devin Haney. And that brings up questions around his chin. It brings up questions around his chin and like, how is he going to look against some of the better 135ers? Because although I think that's a great win from Ryan Garcia, I don't see Ryan Garcia, you know, at that top conversation at 140 or 147, where like we saw his dad talking to Eddie Hurd at the end of the fight and they were talking shit. And then Eddie Hurd said, well, you know, he can fight boots next. Fucking Devin Haney, fuck you. <laughs> who you got? Who do you got? Jerron Ennis. Jerron Ennis. Who? Jerron Ennis. How about Pitbull? Yeah, no, he's good. Jerron Ennis is good. Okay. Respect. 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 It's a good performance. No, it's not. The tones kind of changed a little bit. So I don't see him at 147. And against that 140 elite, there is some people he could do well against. I'd like to see him against Pitbull. I don't know about him against Matias. That would be a fun fight to see like how it goes because you have Matias' iron chin against Ryan Garcia. So I don't see him at 147. But Ryan Garcia's power and speed 100% gave Devin Haney a ton of problems that fight. A ton, a ton of problems. And it was, and it was a shock to me because... Like Lomachenko may not have that left hook as fast as powerful, but Lomachenko is, if we're looking at it, a better boxer than Devin Haney. And there's an argument. I still think that Devin Haney lost that fight against Lomachenko. Against Ryan Garcia, he got dominated for the second half of the fight. I do want to talk about Devin Haney and those rounds two to five. Those rounds two to five were where Devin Haney, you know, won round after round after round after round. And after that round one, after he got hurt, I was kind of looking at it like, holy shit, are we going to have a big upset here in round one? And then rounds two, three, five, we got to see, you know, Devin Haney go back to who Devin Haney is, where he got hurt, but he came back. He was winning round after round after round. And I kind of was, and I kind of thought as we got to the end of round four, round five, I was like, that was a little blip from Devin Haney. He just got hurt with a punch that he didn't see. And now we're going to see Devin Haney kind of impose his will for the rest of the fight. But that wasn't it. And what changed from rounds two to five, where Devin Haney was winning the rounds convincingly, to the latter stages of the fight, to like every round from six was a close round. Some people have said, oh, I don't know how you can score round six for Devin Haney. I think that, you know, that round six was actually a close round. So we'll say seven to 12, seven to 12, the fight completely changed. And what was it? It was Devin Haney being on his front foot versus Devin Haney being on his back foot. When Ryan Garcia is on his back foot, he's not that good of a boxer. We saw it in those rounds. Devin Haney was able to, you know, push his job out there get the distance management correct, be able to, you know, kind of impose his game plan on Ryan Garcia rather than the other way around. And that was where Devin Haney actually performed well. Whereas where we saw Devin Haney on the back foot, that was when Ryan Garcia was, you know, coming in, blitzing in, throwing those combinations, 
And that's where Devin Haney really struggled. He struggled defensively, which is weird because usually we see Devin Haney as a super, super defensively sound boxer. Someone that doesn't get hit a lot, someone that sticks to his game plan. And I thought that he was going to be a really, really hard boxer for Ryan Garcia to beat. Because what Ryan Garcia could do against somebody, against any of the elite boxers that you can name, is Ryan Garcia gets hurt, they go in for the kill, and they get hit with a big shot. Devin Haney is so composed, so calm, that even when he lands those big shots and everyone's kind of looking at him like, oh, is he going to get a finish here? He doesn't really care about it. He's not going to go in for a finish. But what actually happened was that Devin Haney did not have power. And when Devin Haney didn't have power, Ryan Garcia lost respect from, which meant that Devin Haney had to be on the back foot for most of the fight because Ryan Garcia was just walking him down. He was just walking him down over and over and over and over and over. And since Devin Haney couldn't land a big shot on him to back him up a little bit, Ryan Garcia could just, you know, set up those combination punches and he could just wait to set traps for that left hook to land. And that's the difference that we saw in the Ryan Garcia that we saw fighting Javante Davis and the one that we saw fighting Devin Haney. Obviously, there's the weight loss and there's the rehydration and everything like that. And that definitely helped Ryan Garcia out a good bit. And we don't know like what injuries he had going into that fight, but he looked, he looked pretty healthy, pretty fresh inside that ring. So what was the difference? The difference was that power. It, it was the only difference. We're not seeing a different Ryan Garcia. It's not like we saw, you know, he got with Derek James and then all of a sudden he's a completely different fighter to what he was before. And now, you know, he throws a bunch of jabs. Devin Haney outlanded him in the jab conversation, but Ryan Garcia's power punches in those blitzes landed consistently against Devin Haney, which is why you see Ryan Garcia had two times as many power punches as Devin Haney did. Not only did Devin Haney, you know, not throw that many power punches, when he landed them, they did zero. They, they weren't power punches. They weren't hurting Ryan Garcia, whereas Javante Davis would allow Ryan Garcia to come forward, come out of his shell, and then as soon as he got the opportunity to punish him, because you will get opportunities to punish Ryan Garcia, I'll talk about his defense in a second, but when you get the opportunities to punish Ryan Garcia, that's when you can hurt him. That's when Javante hurt him, and Devin Haney didn't have the power to hurt him because he saw the mistakes, and he was able to capitalize on some of the mistakes, but he just wasn't able to, you know, find that shot that would have Ryan Garcia hurt and backing up. Whereas Javante Davis, obviously, we all know the guy's a finisher. The guy's like pinpoint accuracy. I'll give away the first five rounds because I only need one punch, and once I figure you out, you're done. And I think that that Devin Haney-Javante Davis matchup, it would be interesting, but if Ryan Garcia can affect you that much with blitzes, it's going to be a little bit difficult for Devin Haney, although Javante Davis isn't on the back foot boxer. So I think that, I know, I know it's going to sound crazy, you're going to call me crazy, but I think that Javante Davis against Devin Haney would be a closer fight than Ryan Garcia against Devin Haney. I really, really do. It's not like Devin Haney is all of a sudden just a bum and that he can't box anymore. A stylistic matchup that I thought was actually good for him turned out to be a really, really bad stylistic matchup for him. But subconsciously, consciously, whatever, if you see that you're that big of a favorite, if you see, you know, the mental breakdown that we thought that Ryan Garcia had throughout the fight, it's gonna, you know, make you think, okay, I'm going into an easier fight here. And we even saw it in the changing room. We saw Ryan Garcia look super nervous in that changing room before he came out. We saw Devin Haney look super, super calm, collected. And I think that that's almost something that went against Devin Haney because before you go into a fight, anybody that's even sparred before, if you've even sparred, you know, going into your first spar, you're nervous. But that nervous energy kind of helps you out a little bit, you know what I mean? Because it means that, you know, your eyes are working, that you're good, that those nerves are there, that that adrenaline is there. So I think that that's a good thing to be nervous before a fight. We didn't really see that those nerves from Devin Haney. I can't, obviously, I don't know if they were inside him. Obviously, he was feeling the pressure that he has to go out here and win this fight, so he definitely was a little bit nervous. But I think that, you know, how easy the fight looked for Devin Haney definitely didn't help him. Because... You might not do that extra sprint. You might not watch that extra footage. You might, you know, not do that extra round. When you're going against Ryan Garcia, who you see every time you fucking click on Twitter, you see him that he's doing something else. He's trending for something else that's outside of boxing. Whereas when he was fighting Alomachenko, when he was fighting anybody else where he was thinking, this guy's taking this fight 100% seriously. So I think that, you know, that could have affected him a little bit. Now going into the referee. The referee, I saw a lot of people complaining about, and there was definitely some terrible decisions. There were some terrible, terrible decisions. Taking the point away from Ryan Garcia after he hit him off the clinch, giving Devin Haney too much time to recover, like when he was trying to shove Ryan Garcia back when, try, when Ryan Garcia was trying to get back at him. Although I didn't hate that one that much because Ryan Garcia is meant to be, you know, in his corner. That's when the count's meant to actually start is when Ryan Garcia hits his corner. But I do think that, like, the worst decision from him was not taking a point away from Devin Haney for holding. If you're going to take a point away from Ryan Garcia for hitting, you know, after the clinch and hitting when he tells him to break, it's whatever. But 
if you do that, then you're going to have to take a point away from Devin Haney when he clinches for, you know, 15 minutes of that fight as well. That's just, you know, being fair. So I thought that the referee, people were saying like, he's the worst referee ever. Oh my God, look at this ref, look at this ref, look at this ref. I didn't think that he was the worst referee ever. I thought that, you know, it wasn't a good performance and there was definitely a little bit of bias there, intentionally or unintentionally. There was a bit of bias towards Devin Haney, but I didn't think that the referee was the worst. Then we go on to the scorecards. The scorecards, I actually didn't hate a lot of them for boxing. Usually I find myself being like, all three of these scorecards were dog shit. I don't know how this would have happened. And I thought that maybe when I was seeing, you know, the little, uh, when I was seeing the DAZN scorecards halfway through where they were being like, oh, this is what our expert is scoring it so far. I was like, what the fuck is their expert scoring? You know, I'm like, what the fuck am I seeing here? This is just, uh, this is one of the stupidest things ever. And then it turned out that his scorecard was wrong. But I was very sure that I was going to come on here and be like, Ryan Garcia got robbed against Devin Haney. It's another robbery that we've seen in boxing. Like the co-main event was a robbery. If any of you watched it, fucking robbery. Holy shit, that was bad. But me personally, I think that a fair scorecard is 114-110 or 113-111. I had it either way. It just depends on who you give that round six to. I don't think that you can give it as a draw to Devin Haney. I don't see where you find the rounds to give it as a draw, especially with all those 10-8s. And I think that realistically... If you take that point away from Devin Haney or don't take the point away from Ryan Garcia, whichever one you want to pick, it would have been 115, 110 or 116, 109, which I think are accurate scorecards for how the fight went. So I actually didn't think that the scorecards were bad. Apart from obviously the, the one one that was a draw, that was a bad scorecard. But, you know, you're always going to get a dodgy scorecard on boxing. I guarantee if you check that guy's bank account, there's some money in there from Bill. Big Bill Haney's definitely, you know, touched up that, that judge and got him to give a favorable scorecard. People's opinions on Ryan Garcia, though. Ryan Garcia in this fight defensively did not look good. He defensively did not look good in this fight. And the same tendencies that we've seen him, you know, look bad in other fights that I think, you know, would give him trouble against anybody that's got power are the same tendencies that we saw in this fight. Tries to shoulder roll. Please, Ryan, never, ever, ever try to shoulder roll. It doesn't work for you. Turning his back, turning your back in a fight, it doesn't make any sense. And I know that Derek James hates it as well. He hates when he sees Ryan Garcia do it. So it's not like it's something that they worked on. It's something that they saw. Maybe Devin Haney wasn't going to capitalize on. It's just bad. And it's like someone in their first bar ever. If you're, you know, in your first bar ever, or, you know, you've never fought before, you kind of end up turning your back. When you start to get hit, when someone starts to apply the pressure and you don't really know how to circle out or you don't really know how to defend yourself, you'll end up turning around because your body subconsciously is just like, oh, I don't want to take these punches to the head. Let me turn around. But Ryan Garcia is a professional boxer and an elite professional boxer, one of the best on the planet. And he's turning around when he's getting hit. And that I don't understand. I don't understand it at all. I don't understand where the tactics are. And that kind of defensive shit is going to get you hurt against power punchers. How bad his defense is, if you go up against a guy that has that power to knock you out, say he tries to go up to 147, or say he goes against someone at 140 that does have real KO power, he would be in trouble. In big, big trouble against them. Where does Ryan Garcia go next? Where does Devin Haney go next? I know that we're going to have a rematch. I'm pretty sure that we're going to have a rematch. Ryan Garcia hopefully gets paid in that because his stock's never going to be as high as it is right now. So I presume he's going to get, you know, some life-changing money. How do I think that the rematch goes? I think that what I was saying about Devin Haney and Bill Haney being big studiers of the game, I think that the rematch would go more in Devin Haney's favor. Like, I wouldn't pick Ryan Garcia to win this fight. And if Devin Haney goes in an underdog against Ryan Garcia... I would definitely be looking at Devin Haney to win this fight. The only problems are for Devin Haney is the chin. If it's his chin that's a problem, we're in trouble. We're in big, big, big trouble. Because I know one or two things about fighters that have dog shit chins and fighters that I like having dog shit chins. So if his chin is gone, he's fucked. But if it's just adjusting to the blitzes and game planning for the blitzes, obviously Derek James is going to do a good job with Ryan Garcia as well. And he's going to, you know, have him kind of ready for something new and come up with something new and come up with something new to counter Devin Haney. But Devin Haney should be able to take advantage of a lot of the stuff that he saw in that fight. So if, if you're asking me right now to bet on who I think wins a rematch, I'm betting on Devin Haney to win a rematch. But I think that if Ryan Garcia wants to go elsewhere at 147, I don't really want to see him at 147 against Boots or Bud or any of those guys, even Errol at 147. I don't want to see him against any of those guys. Those guys are too big for him. At 140, I don't think that Subriel Matias is a bad matchup where Subriel Matias has been caught before. He's been finished. He, you know, is very hittable, has this kind of super, super straight stand-up style. And he's not a big power puncher. He's a volume puncher rather than a power puncher. So I think that that's not a terrible matchup. You have Pitbull if he goes and fights Pitbull. I don't like it that much as a matchup. I think that Pitbull has a little bit too much power for him. But I don't know. I don't know where he goes next. The rematch, I think, is where Ryan Garcia goes next. 
Let me know what you guys thought of the fight. Let me know, did you guys think, you know, that the scorecards were bad, that the ref was bad, and who does Ryan Garcia fight next? Make sure to like, sub to all that YouTube channel. I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.